Arpad was the head of the confederation of the Hungarian tribes at the turn of the 9th and 10th centuries. He may have been either the sacred ruler or kender of the Hungarians, or their military leader or gayola. Although most details of his life are debated by historians, because different sources contain contradictory information. Despite this, many Hungarians refer to him as the founder of our country and Arpad's preeminent role in the Hungarian conquest of the Carpathian Basin has been emphasized by some later chronicles. The dynasty descending from Arpad ruled the Kingdom of Hungary until 1301. Biography Early life Arpad was the son of Almos who is mentioned as the first head of the confederation of the Hungarian tribes by all Hungarian chronicles. His mother's name and family are unknown. According to historian Gaila Krista, Arpad was born around 845. His name derived from the Hungarian word for barley. The Byzantine emperor Constantine Porphyrogenitus states that the Hungarians had never at any time had any other prince before Arpad, which is in sharp contrast to the Hungarian chronicler report of the position of Arpad's father, in Porphyrogenitus's narration. The Khazar Khagan initiated the centralization of the command of the Hungarian tribes in order to strengthen his own suzerainty over them. The Khagan initially wanted to appoint a chieftain named Levedi to lead the Hungarians. However, Levedi did not accept this offer and suggested that either Almos or Arpad should be promoted instead of him. The Khagan approached the Hungarians with this new proposal. They preferred Arpad to his father, because he was greatly admired for wisdom and counsel and valor, and capable of this rule. Thereafter, Arpad was made prince according to the custom of the Chazars, by lifting him upon a shield. Constantine Porphyrogenitus refers to Arpad as Great Prince of Hungary. The reliability of the Byzantine Emperor's report of Arpad's election is debated by modern historians. For instance, Victor Spinae states that it is rather vague and scarcely credible, but Andras Ronataz writes that its core is reliable. The latter historian adds that Arpad's election was promoted by Almos who forced Levedi Kenda to renounce. Accordingly, in Ronatas's view, Arpad succeeded Lebedi as sacred ruler or kenda, which enabled his father to preserve his own position of the actual leader of the Hungarians or Gaiola. Towards the Hungarian conquest the earliest reliable source of Arpad's life is an early 10th century document, the continuation of the chronicle by George the Monk. It narrates that the Byzantine Emperor Leo VI the Wise sent his envoy Nicetas Clearest to the Hungarians in 894 or 895 to give presents and incite them against the Bulgarian Empire. Sclerus met with their two leaders, Arpad and Kherson, at the Lower Danube. Sclerus's mission succeeded. A Hungarian army soon crossed the Danube on Byzantine ships against Bulgaria. An interpolation in Porphyrogenitus's text suggests that the invading Hungarians were under the command of Arpad's son, Leontica. The positions held by Arpad in Kherson at the time of their negotiations with Sclerus have debated by historians. Spinae wrote that Arpad was the Gaela, and Kherson was the Kenda. In contrast, Krista said that Kherson was the Gaela and Arpad represented his father, Almos Kenda. At that time, the Bulgarians had disregarded the peace treaty and were raiding through the Thracian countryside. Justice pursued them for breaking their oath to Christ our God, the Emperor of all, and they quickly met up with their punishment. While our forces were engaged against the Saracens, divine providence led the Hungarians, in place of the Romans, to campaign against the Bulgarians. Our Majesty's fleet of ships supported them and ferried them across the Danube. Providence sent him out against the army of the Bulgarians that had so wickedly taken up arms against Christians and, as though they were public executioners, they decisively defeated them in three engagements, so that the Christian Romans might not willingly stain themselves with the blood of the Christian Bulgarians. Leo the Wise 
tactics the Hungarian army defeated the Bulgarians, but the latter hired the Pekinegs against them. The Bulgarians and Pekinegs simultaneously invaded the Hungarians' territories in the western regions of the Pontic steppes in 895 or 896. The destruction of their dwelling places by the Pekinegs forced the Hungarians to leave for a new homeland across the Carpathian Mountains towards the Pannonian Plain. The Illuminated Chronicle says that Arpad's father Almos could not enter Pannonia, for he was killed in Erdolf or Transylvania. Engel, Krista and Molnar, who accept the reliability of this report, wrote that Almos's death was a ritual murder, similar to the sacrifice of the Khazar Kargans in case of a disaster affecting their people. In contrast with them, Rona Taz states that even if the report on Almos's murder reflects true event, the only possible explanation would be that Arpad or someone in his entourage killed the aged prince. Spinai rejects the Illuminated Chronicle's report on Almos's murder in Transylvania, because the last mention of Almos in the contrasting narration of the Gesta Hungarorum is connected to a siege of Ungva by the Hungarians. The latter chronicle says that Almos appointed Arpad as leader and master of the Hungarians on this occasion. Rain Arpad's name is completely unknown to all sources written in East Francia, which was one of the main powers of the Carpathian Basin at the turn of the 9th and 10th centuries. These sources, including the Annal Alamanisai and the Annal Eisnad Lenses, only mention another Hungarian leader, Kurson. According to Christa and other historians, these sources suggest that Kursen must have been the Gaila commanding the Hungarian forces, while Arpad succeeded his murdered father as the sacred Kenda, proposing a contrasting theory. The Romanian historian Kurta wrote that Kursen was the Kenda and Arpad Gaila only succeeded him when Kursen was murdered by Bavarians in 902 or 904. In contrast to nearly contemporaneous sources, Hungarian chronicles written centuries after the events, for instance, the Gesta Hungarorum and the Illuminated Chronicle emphasize Arpad's preeminent role in the conquest of the Carpathian Basin. The Gesta Hungarorum also highlights Arpad's military skills and his generosity. This chronicle also emphasizes that Tiliakut Tiliakut Enway, one of the heads of the seven Hungarian tribes, acquired the land of Transylvania for himself and his posterity only after Arpad had authorized him to conquer it. Having crossed the Danube, they encamped beside the Danube as far as Budafelevis. Hearing this, all the Romans living throughout the land of Pannonia saved their lives by flight. Next day, Prince Arpad and all his leading men with all the warriors of Hungary entered the city of King Atia and they saw all the royal palaces, some ruined to the foundations, others not, and they admired beyond measure the stone buildings and were happier than can be told that they had deserved to take without fighting the city of King Attila, of whose line Prince Arpad descended. They feasted every day with great joy in the palace of King Attila, sitting alongside one another, and all the melodies and sweet sounds of zithers and pipes along with all the songs of minstrels were presented to them. Prince Arpad gave great lands and properties to the guests staying with them, and, when they heard this, many guests thronged to him and gladly stayed with him. Anonymous Gesta Hungarorum The Gesta Hungarorum says that Arpad took an oath of the leading men and warriors of Hungary, and had his son, Prince Sultan, elevated to prince in his life. However, the reliability of this report and the list of the grand princes in the Gesta Hungarorum is dubious. For instance, it ignores Fajasz, who ruled when Constantine VII Porphyrogenitus was completing his De Administranda Imperia around 950. Death The date of Arpad's death is debated. The Gesta Hungarorum states that he died in 907. However, Christa wrote that he actually died in 900 or later because the jester says 903 is the starting date of the Hungarian land-taking, instead of its 
actual date around 895. If the jester's report on his funeral is reliable, Arpad was buried at the head of a small river that flows through a stone culvert to the city of King Attila, where a village, Fairagi has a developed near Buda a century later. Legacy the Hungarians arrived in their new homeland within the Carpathians under Arpad. Arpad is the principal actor in the Gesta Hungarorum, which attributes almost all memorable events of the Hungarian land taking to him. Furthermore, until the extinction of the male line of his dynasty in 1301, Hungary was ruled by a single line of princes all descending from Arpad. Arpad is still famed among the Hungarians as Honalapito or the founder of our country. Family. Porphyrogenitus says Arpad had four sons. First, Tarkatsis, second, Ilech, third, Iotsis, fourth, Zaltas. However, he also refers to one, Leontikas, son of Arpad. Krista wrote that Leontikas was an alternative name of Tarkatsis. The name and family of the mother of Arpad's sons are unknown. The following is a family tree presenting Arpad's ancestors and his descendants to the end of the 10th century. Asterisk Leontica and Tarkatsis are supposed to have been identical. Asterisk Asterisk The father of Taz was one of Arpad's four or five sons, but his name is unknown. Asterisk 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 All later grand princes and kings of Hungary descended from Taxony.